Order! 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 You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! The Leave camp suffered a blow last night when the Conservative MP Sarah Wollaston defected to remain. But this morning there was better news for them as the JCB chairman and Tory donor Lord Bamford came out for Leave. And a major city investor who's already given over half a million pounds to vote Leave launched his own campaign, Brexit Express. Here's our political correspondent, Michael Crick. Outside a Hindu temple in Wembley today, Vote Leave's famous battle bus, declaring that we send the EU £50 million a day, or £350 million a week. Money which could help the health service, they've long said. That's a lie, says Sarah Wollaston, and for that and other reasons, she switched to the Remain camp. I've been saying this for some time and arguing uh, with, the, with the Leave campaign too, that they should be using truthful data. This is a gross figure, it doesn't take account of the rebate, it doesn't take account of the amount that they have already pledged if they are successful to keep giving to farmers, scientists and so forth. Back outside the temple though, these Brexit MPs defended the claim on their bus. What we're saying is, take control, the British people can decide what happens to British money rather than the bureaucrats in Brussels who are unelected and unaccountable. Well, let's, let's talk to somebody. I mean, we, won't, we won't have another 50 million to spend on the health service, though, will we? We can choose where to spend it. And as soon 50 as million? We can choose where we wish 50 to 50 million? Oh, what's better than 50 the million? That you elect to represent Number five, 50 million? Get to choose. If you're Six, choosing a Conservative 50, government, 50 you know million? exactly what their policies are. Will we have 50 million? A Labour government, you know that they'll have 50 million, will we? Policies. <laughs> we get to choose. Outside Europe, we'd have more than 100 million to be able to decide ourselves where it goes, and 100 million of that could well go to the NHS, but at the very least, it'd be MPs deciding rather than the bureaucrats. Better news for Brexit is that the owner of JCB, Lord Bamford, here in the middle, and a big Tory donor, wrote to his 6,000 staff putting the case for Brexit. Big support from another wealthy businessman too. Today saw the launch of yet another Brexit campaign called Brexit Express. And over the next fortnight, they plan to spend up to £700,000 on posters like these all over the country. Funding Brexit Express, a city investor who's already given more than a million pounds to other Brexit groups, including the official Vote Leave. You set this campaign up and you can um, spend on top of what the, the seven million that uh, Vote Leave is allowed to spend. Uh, that's right. It's a, 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 it's a ruse, thing. really, isn't it? Not at all. It's just, you know, if you set up another campaign and another campaign after that, you can keep spending more and more on well, one I think side. I think we're doing things... I don't know precisely what Vote Leave is spending their £7 million on, but I do know what we're spending ours on, which is a uh, poster campaign in London and hopefully in some of the other cities. In backing Brexit, isn't he out of line with the rest of the city? I think a lot of people in the city uh, will vote uh, Brexit on the day. And, um, and keep quiet about it. Well, at least keep quiet about it for the time under, being. Under the no one will ever know principle. It's now neck and neck with 54 Brexit campaign bodies registered with the Electoral Commission and 54 who back remain. Michael Crick, well, ahead of another big referendum debate tonight, I'm joined now from Westminster by the Labour Leave campaign campaigner, Kate Hoey. Um, Kate Hoey, you're one of a very small handful of uh, leading Labour politicians who favour leave. Um, are you surprised, or as surprised as uh, Jeremy Corbyn is, to find that a lot of people don't know which side Labour's on? No, I'm not surprised, and we are in a minority in Parliament, but Labour Leave has been running a really good campaign out in the country, and we're finding as we go round that so many Labour supporters and ex-Labour supporters are saying that they're delighted there's a Labour Leave campaign. You know, I just meet people all the time who are just astonished that Jeremy's gone back on everything that he said and did during the 20-odd years that certainly I've been in the lobbies with him, voting against all the treaties. And I think and so you that, you probably know, harbour the, there, and the I view. understand he do, is... Do you harbour the view he, that he secretly... I think he is... Does he secretly support you, do you think? Secretly? Well, I... You know him I very think, well. I think Jeremy, you know, 
yeah, I do know him well, and, and I, you know, I, I always say it's a secret, secret ballot. But the reality is, he wanted to keep the party together, and particularly the shadow cabinet. But you know, out there, the Labour voters know very well that the EU is no longer protecting uh, rights. You just have to look at what happened in Greece. You just have to look at the way they've got rid of trade union rights. And of course, if we were to leave, all the rights that we've got are enshrined in British law. So it is a bit of a nonsense to tell people out there that somehow, if they leave the EU, that all of this will go. And do well, we let me get in there. Uh, yeah, there's a very interesting point indeed. Let me ask government. you, therefore, about uh, yeah. Mr Corbyn. Is he right to worry uh, that a right-wing faction of the Tory party coming into power after yeah. the Brexit vote would then actually be in charge of getting out of Europe and therefore do it on very Tory terms? One presumes you're still a socialist. Well, I think that, you know, as a, Labour, as a Labour Party member of Parliament, I want to see a Labour government. And what worries me about the Labour Party campaign to remain is that there's almost a saying, we're not going to have a Labour government to do all these things. I want to see the rights at work improved. I want but to Forgive me, uh, that is not what I asked you. That is not what I asked you. There are still four years well, of this government again, left. I will ask you again. A right-wing mm. faction of uh, Tory uh, MPs take over and administer this Brexit. Are you comfortable as a Look, socialist that this will be done on Tory terms? I am, I am comfortable as a socialist in, in, the, in, in following in the footsteps of people like Tony Benn who warned that That's this was an anti-democratic That's not what I asked you. Are you opinion. comfortable? It's, well, no, I'm just forgive telling me, Kate you, John, Harry, I'm, I'm asking telling you that the question. people... Well, let's have the answer then. Well, well, I, what I'm saying is that the people of this country, we live in a democratic society. If, if a party that does things that we don't want to happen, then we boot them out. And it is just ridiculous to think, look what we did about getting the trade union bill. They couldn't even get it through in all its entirety. All our rights at work have been won by the campaigning of trade unions and the labour movement, not by the EU. And I am perfectly happy to accept the will of the British people, because there is coming a general election. And if the Conservative but, but government do things a, that the, the electorate don't want, then we will... I think you as a lifelong Labour Look, Party member committed to social democracy that you're going to be comfortable with people uh, on the right wing of the Conservative Party administering the departure from Europe and you're perfectly happy about that. Well, actually, I think, John, I think if we, if we do have a vote to leave, which I'm pretty confident we will, I think the negotiating team will be much wider. I'm very clear that it will not be David Cameron negotiating on behalf of, of us and that there will actually be people from the Labour side who have been opposing the EU, that they could also be part of that. This is a, this is a negotiation which will take time. Nothing is going to be rushed through, but I just want to counteract what Labour have been saying, that people will lose their rights at work. This is just complete nonsense. This is Kate the Harry, opportunity I'm grateful for the to you for making it so clear. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank you very much for joining us.